Shalom and welcome to Challenging Torah, a project of the Malibu Jewish Center and Synagogue. This week, we understand that all of Torah is actually our challenge, our challenge to deal with texts that may seem dysfunctional in our day and age, our challenge to find the way to help Torah guide our lives and the changes in our lives, and our challenge to keep Torah alive on a very long journey. Masse is the story of the journey from place to place, which is preceded by Matot, which they always are read together. And these issues are the issues that are most difficult. And what are they? Well, the beginning is, and Moses spoke to the chiefs of the tribes concerning the people of Israel, say, this is the thing the Lord has commanded. If a man vows a vow to the Lord or swears an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. That's the challenge. Wow. And the Jewish belief is that words create a reality, just as God created the world through speaking ten sayings, as we have the speaking of the Ten Commandments that are later written down. We're in a political season right now where it appears that anybody can say anything, and whatever comes out of one's mouth is both without the thought of what will this do what will my words create? One can always deny that you ever actually said that or that's what you meant or that you even have to have it went from truthiness to outright lying. This is incredible. This is so against Torah Judaism. Why on Kol Nidre we say release us from the vows because once we've given our word, it's really our word. That's the first challenge. And the second challenge, as usual, comes down to a challenge about gender. We are in this season where we are looking at gender issues. It's right in front of us. If a woman also vows a vow to the Lord and binds herself by a bond, being in her father's house, in her youth, and her father hears her vow, and her bond which she has bound her soul, the father, hears it and holds his peace, then her vows shall stand. If her father hears it and says, no, no, she didn't really mean that, he can abrogate her vow. She either belongs to her father or she belongs to her husband. And if a husband hears a vow or inherits a vow, the husband has the right to say, oh, she didn't really mean that. Mostly, obviously, they're worried about vows of abstinence and sexual abstinence included, and they want to be able to say, no, no, she can't promise that. But women are treated as chattel. There's no question about it. A woman who is divorced or a widow, her vow stands. But there's no place for those people in this society. You either belong to your father or you belong to your husband. So here we have today, and I couldn't help but think, what if Bill stood up at the DNC and said, no, I know Hillary swears she's going to do all that stuff, but the truth is, I'm telling you, her vow doesn't stand. Trust me. Amazing. But maybe not so amazing. Hearing a woman's voice has been a derivative of this. And in Israel today, and in the Orthodox community today, a woman is not supposed to sing in public, or in many places speak in public. We are struggling with this now. The Orthodox Union is really struggling with the fact that now there are educated women who want to be uh, not just Rabbah or Maharat, they want to be Rabbi. And they are functioning as teachers. Can a woman's voice be heard? Does her vow stand? We are at the crux of these problems, 2016. And so, 
We add yet another complication to this challenge of challenging Torah, which comes down to be careful what you quote out of other people's texts, like the Quran. Because this is what exists in our text in this Torah portion. And Moses said to them, I have to back up and say, God is still really, really angry about the story about the Midianites and how the women seduced, it's again a woman problem, seduced the men into the tents and held up the little Lashera and said, well, if you worship my goddess, we could do business here. God is furious. And Moses knows God is furious, and he urges them to go out and take vengeance on the Midianites and says, they've been successful in battle. And Moses says, have you brought me all the women alive? Behold, these are the women that caused the people of Israel to sin through the counsel of Balaam. And now you are to kill every male among them and every woman who has known a man by lying with him, but all the young women who have not known a man, you can keep for yourselves. That is an amazing statement. And at that point, we're all tempted to go, uh, actually, I'm out of here, and I don't really study Torah, and this is a vengeful God, and I don't want any part of it. Really? We can cherry pick things, but Torah is about shlemut, wholeness. And we have to take the whole piece and ask what we are supposed to change, what we are supposed to redeem. This is the end of the story of the journey of the Jewish people. Deuteronomy is a repeat. We are at the end of numbers. And we need to tell the whole story. Spies, rebellions, vengeance. As we look at what's our story, and we look at our own lives, and we say, do I only tell you the good parts of my life? What about those parts of my life that I'd rather, rather not look right now? To be whole is to make peace with all of our life. Shalom and shlemut, wholeness, are the same word. So all we can wish for is strength on the journey. Hazak, hazak, benit hazek. May you be strong, may you be strong, may you be strengthened, is what we say at the end of a Torah portion to look at our lives, to evaluate our lives. We need strength, strength, and to be strengthened. Enjoy the journey. Shabbat shalom.